has blessed you. Give him all the praise. Appreciate him for the strength he has given to you. Father, in Jesus' precious name, we have given thanks. Today is our enough is enough service. Whatever it is that is not of God in your life, today marks their end in the name of Jesus. What is that situation that you are saying enough is enough to? One minute, I'd like you to express your desire to God. Lord, Enough is enough to this pain. Enough is enough to this sickness. Enough is enough to this loneliness. Enough is enough to this indebtedness. Be specific in your desire. Somebody said to God, I must be pregnant in January. The devil tried but the pregnancy was sustained. Be specific. Be specific. What must God do? Today is already the seventh day of 21 days of fasting. Today must mark the end of that affliction. to you. Lord, settle me in this service. Settle my marital situation. Settle my career situation. Let ups and down be over in my life. Let today mark a turning point. Visit me by your word. Do something new in my life. I refuse to go back the same way. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' precious name, we are praying. Father, we have come to say thank you. Thank you for your faithfulness. And thank you for your loving kindness. Thank you for bringing us again to your presence. He said in your presence there is fullness of joy. And at your right hand there are pleasures forevermore. We ask, O oh Lord, in this enough is enough service. Let every issue of long continuance, every age long ordeal, let it be terminated on this mountain. Whatever your people say enough to, let today mark their expiry date. Give everyone a turnaround encounter in this service. Let no one return empty and Send us your word of life and let your name be glorified. Let there be instant healing and deliverance today. In Jesus' precious name we are praying. Come and put your hands together for Jesus as you take your seat. In God's presence. If you can, help me congratulate your neighbor to your right and your left with a smile. Say congratulations. Congratulations. I'm happy to sit beside you this morning. Congratulations.
Hallelujah. To God alone be all the glory. I'd like to welcome you into God's presence in the second Sunday of the year and our enough is enough service. And I pray that by the power that is in God's word, there shall be definite turnaround for somebody in the name of Jesus. Today we mark a turning point in someone's life in the name of Jesus. If that person is here, your amen will be the loudest one. The prophetic theme for this month is captioned prayer and fasting, gateway to breaking limits. Can we echo that together? Prayer and fasting, gateway to breaking limits. And last Monday, the 6th of January, we began our 21 days of fasting and prayer. And I want to believe each and every one of us have been having a most glorious time in God's presence. My prayer is that as this fast is progressing, you'll be counting your blessings as well in Jesus' name. This fast is not permitted to end without a tangible change of story for you in the name of Jesus Christ. Our teaching series for this month, our Sunday services is captioned Engaging the Power of Prayer and Fasting for Supernatural Breakthrough. Engaging the Power of of prayer and fasting for supernatural breakthrough. And once again, we bless God for those awesome testimonies. And whatever God does for one, it does for every other person. Anyone believing God for favor in any test, in any exam, God of heaven will make you pass first time. Amen. There shall be no failure for you in 2020. And for every runaway child, runaway husband, runaway wife, I decree there shall be restoration. I decree there shall be restoration in the name of Jesus Christ. So engaging the power of prayer and fasting for supernatural breakthrough. We established last Sunday by way of introduction that fasting does not change God. Fasting changes us. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Malachi chapter 3 and verse 6, he say, I am the Lord, I change not. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 8, he said, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So we know God cannot change. He does not change. Fasting is essentially to change us so that we can be conformed to his image. Second Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 18, he said, We all with open face, we are beholding him as in a glass, the image of God, and we are changed to the same glory, the same image that we see from glory to glory. So we are changed on the altar of prayer and fasting. We also establish that fasting is not a substitute to obedience. You can't say, well, if I disobey God and I fast, God will have mercy. No. Fasting is not a substitute to disobedience. In fact, when you are fasting and you are not obeying God, you are only reporting yourself to God. And so, it must be done the right way. And what is the right way? Isaiah chapter 58 and verse 6, our anchor scripture for the month. He said, is this not the fast that I've chosen? To lose the band of wickedness. Why do I ask people to fast? It's so that I can lose the band of wickedness. To undo the heavy burdens. To let the oppressed go free. And that you break every yoke. So the essence of fast is to break the yoke of the enemy, to undo the heavy body. You feel as if there's a weight around you. That's why what we are doing when we fast is to let go of food and other pleasure in order to focus on spiritual matters. We also establish that fasting is useless without prayer. It is prayer that gives value to fasting. So moment of fasting is to do away with food and pleasure 
in order to engage with God on the altar of prayer. And last week we said it must be done with a clear objective. There must be a specific objective for you engaging in a fast. Just after the order of that Isaiah 58 and verse 6, what do we want God to do? And I pray that whatever you have said before the Lord in this fast, it will turn to you for a testimony. I say it will turn to you for a testimony. You agree with me that we are in the last days. And the last days are the days of prayer and fasting. Jesus said this severally in scripture in Matthew chapter 9 and verse 14 and 15. When the Pharisees were asking and said, why is it that your disciples do not fast? Verse 15, look at his response. He said, can the children of the bride chamber mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them? He said, but the days will come. We are in those days now. When the bridegroom shall be taken from them, and then shall they fast. So those who will matter in God's end time agenda are those who will engage on the altar of prayer and fasting. And never forget this. The primary purpose for fasting and prayer is for empowerment. Say with me, empowerment. Our call to worship, Psalm 63 and from verse 1. He said there, he said, O oh Lord, my God, early will I seek thee. My soul thirsteth for thee. My flesh longeth for thee. Soul thirst, flesh longing, that is a moment, a period of fasting. In a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. Why? Verse 2. To see thy power and thy glory. So the primary purpose of fast is for empowerment. Yes, secondary purpose can be for you believing God for change of story. But when power comes, every other thing must respond. So, please get this right. And we're laying this foundation so that no one goes through this 21 days. Already the seventh day. So, we have 14 days to go. No one goes through 21 days, you know. What else can be most frustrating than for you to be in a race? And at the end of the tape, you are told you are not enlisted for the race. Please get this right. The primary purpose of fasting is to be empowered. And when empowerment comes, everything must bow. I pray for somebody here. God's power will be made manifest in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Two other things we are looking at in this service. What? will fasting do when we do it right? Fasting, number one, provokes outbreak of revelation. Fasting provokes outbreak of revelation. Let me quickly say this. One of the greatest weapons of the enemy against the believer is ignorance. Say with me, ignorance. What the devil does is to blindfold the minds of believers. Second Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 4. He said, the God of this world, and the devil is the God of this world, he said, has blinded the minds of those who believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is in the image of God, should shine unto them. The greatest weapon of the devil is ignorance. And that's why Psalm 82 verse 5, he said, they know not, neither do they understand. And because of that, the foundation of their life is out of course. But I have said, verse 6, Psalm 82, verse 6, ye are God. And he said, all of you are the children of the Most High. But because they don't know what God has called them, verse 7, he said, they will die like ordinary men. That shall not be your portion in Jesus' name. Ignorance is one of the greatest weapons, or if you like, call it darkness. The devil blinds people's eyes not to see that which God has already made available to them. That's why John chapter 8 verse 32 says, you will know the truth. And what happens? The truth shall set you free. In this season of waiting on the Lord, I see an outbreak of revelation in the name of Jesus. I say I see an outbreak of revelation in the name of Jesus. But this revelation is facilitated by prayer and fasting. 
In that Isaiah 58, verse 6, he said, Is not this the fast that I've chosen? And then verse 8 of it, he said, When you fast the right way, then shall your light break forth. Another word for revelation is light. He said, light will break forth. And part of what you will have in the middle of a fast is that your health will spring forth speedily. I speak to somebody here right now. Whatever sickness or disease that is in your body, maybe it's in the blood, cancer, leukemia, high blood pressure, whatever it is, I decree them cast out in the name of Jesus. I say I decree them cast out in the name of Jesus. So when light comes, darkness disappears. Just like God's servant, our bishop, we always say, the dominion of light over darkness is instant and unquestionable. If you enter a room like this that is dark, you will never turn on the light and darkness say, no, I won't go. No, it goes automatically. So when light comes from God's word over the situation you are confronted with, darkness must disappear. And the works of the devil is what we call darkness. Causing all manner of hardship, causing all manner of pain. In this enough is enough. The enemy must pack his load and go in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. So as we engage in a fast, that's why we have also been admonished to spend quality time in the world. A time of fasting is not a time when you are checking the time and say, ah, it is very slow today. Ah, ah. Since morning is just 12 noon. You must well go and eat. It's a time to settle with God. And in searching of scripture, whatever situation you are confronted with, there is answer in the world. Say with me, there is answer in the world. But we have the responsibility to search it out. There is answer in the world, but you must search it out. Jeremiah and chapter 31 from verse 33. Jeremiah chapter 31 from verse 33. He said, it shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, saith the Lord, I will put my law in their inward part and write it in their heart. And it will, I will be their God. They shall be my people. And verse 34. He said, and they shall teach no more. Any man is neighbor. And every man is brother saying, know the Lord. He said, for they shall all know me. I will reveal myself to them. As they are engaging with me. So you are doing away with food. So that you can focus on spiritual matters. Prayer. Study of the word. And then light breaks forth. And the Bible makes us know what revelation does. Revelation puts you in command. When light comes, darkness disappears. I remember the story of Smith Wigglesworth that was shared. He was in a house and then he heard the noise of a rocking chair in the living room. So he went there, very dark in the night, and then took out the lamp that he was holding and eased and said, I didn't even know it was you, the devil, and went back to sleep. What can make you do that is when you know that you have dominion over the devil. Some people will start VG that night and be checking and be calling people. You see, when you have light, the things that... You know, shake others, don't shake you. I pray for somebody that in the midst of these 21 days of fasting and prayer, light will break forth for you. I say light will break forth for you. Ecclesiastes chapter 11 and verse 7, the Bible tells us there that light is sweet. Say with me, light is sweet. He said truly, the light is sweet and it's a pleasant thing for the eyes to behold the sun. When you know what to do about a situation, you are not running up and down. When you are in charge of a situation, you put your hand in your pocket, you, you are in charge, you are in dominion. Isaiah 60 and verse 1, 
It says, Arise, shine, for your light is come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. He said, Even though darkness will cover the earth and gross darkness the people, but the Lord shall arise upon you, and his glory will be seen upon you. That shall be your testimony in the name of Jesus. Another thing that light does is to grant you speed. The things that takes others years to accomplish, when light comes, there is speedy accomplishment. Say with me, speedy accomplishment. How fast can you drive at night, at 12 midnight, when there is no light? You don't have your headlamp on. And that is why each one must take responsibility to go for light. This one that you have a dream and then you are moving from place to place, running a task. No, you know what to do from the world. You get into the world and say, Lord, there is an answer in this book. I remember the story of a woman many years ago. The husband will just disappear from the house. Go for a month after just come back. By the time he comes back, just smelling of drink, alcohol, and everything. This woman was tired. And went before the Lord and began to search from Genesis and say, Lord, show me, show me. There is something I don't know. Then she found the key in the book of Jeremiah and said to God, Lord, this is what your word says about this situation. An end has come to this affliction. And that was the end. When you have light, you decree a thing and the Bible says it shall be established. There is difference between somebody that is making declaration without understanding and somebody that is doing it with understanding. You remember the seven sons of Kepha? They were saying to the demon-possessed person in the book of Acts of the Apostles chapter 14 and then chapter 19 and from verse 14, and they said, we adjure you in the name of Jesus whom Paul preached. <laughs> and the demon-possessed person said, yes, you are mentioning the name of Jesus, but you don't have understanding of what he carries. And the demon-possessed person pounced on them. The Bible says, beat them, tore their clothes, and they, they left naked. Please, whatever you do, make sure you do it from the place of understanding. And understanding won't come until you settle with the world. And that's what we are saying. Prayer and fasting, you know, even in the natural. I remember when writing professional exams, anytime I want to be focused, I go without food. And I've said this before, that even unbelievers fast. So the fasting itself is not the big thing. What you do in the midst of the fast is what gives value to it. Anytime you want to focus, when you want to read, you have a lot. Because I tell you, most time when you are so loaded with food, you know, there are times when I say, well, I'm going to wake up in the middle of the night and then I eat pandemonium. I wake up the following morning. Because when you are so loaded, you, the body is heavy. But when you are light, when you do away with food, your spiritual sensitivity is sharper. And that is what fasting does. Allows you to catch spiritual signal. You will not miss it in the name of Jesus. So it gives light and also speedy accomplishment. Number two thing that fasting does. Number one, we said it provokes outbreak of revelation. Revelation is what puts you in command and gives you speedy accomplishment. Number two. It provokes the manifold wisdom of God. Say with me, manifold wisdom of God. In the midst of the fast, one of the signs of the last days, they are the days of the manifold wisdom of God. What you call manifold is many-sided wisdom of God will be on display in the last days. Ephesians chapter 3 and from verse 1, Paul the apostle speaking to us there, and telling us of the effect of this manifold wisdom of God. Part of the end time agenda of God is the raw display of his power. He said from verse 2, Ephesians 3 from verse 2. If you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given me to you, Lord, 
how that by revelation God made known unto me the mystery as I wrote afore in few words, whereby when you read, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. He said, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. And if you move straight down to verse 8, he said, unto me who am less than the least of all saints, is this grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ? And to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world was hidden in God, who has created all things by Jesus Christ. Look at verse 10. To the intent that now unto principalities and power in heavenly places might be made known by the church the manifold wisdom of God. Paul is saying here that by revelation, God revealed to him part of his end time agenda, the many-sided wisdom of God. And what is wisdom? Knowing what to do and being able to do it. Revelation stops at revealing, you know, it's from the word apocalypsis, revealing something that is covered, revealing it. But when it's revealed, you need grace to be able to do. There are many people who know what to do, but the grace to do is not there. Where wisdom comes in is that this truth is not just revealed, but you are empowered to be able to do that which God has shown you. Wisdom is not just knowing. Wisdom is doing what you know. And that's one of the things that fasting does. It empowers you to be able to do that which God has commanded. I pray for somebody today. The doing grace shall be released unto you in the name of Jesus. I said the doing grace shall be released to you in the name of Jesus. And we saw how this Paul apostle also was a man of fasting. 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 27. Among other things said there, in watchings and in fasting often. I was fasting. I was fasting. No man who eats all day, eats all night, amounts to much in life. There are times when you need to let go of certain things to lay hold on new things. Remember I said last Sunday, the calendar might have changed to a new year, but it will not be a new year for you until there is a new you. You can't be doing things like you have always done and expect a different result. That's another definition of insanity. Doing the same thing and expecting a different result is insanity. If there must be a new year, there must be a new approach to doing things. And God is saying, wait on me these 21 days. Some years, about two years ago, in a former station, I said to somebody there, I said, this fasting will not kill you. Let me tap your neighbor. Say, this fasting will not kill you. And as usual, this man had been on medication for a long time. And he got home and wanted to take his medication again. And according to him, he heard my voice. He said, I heard Pastor off. He said, this fasting will not kill you. And the drug, the, the, the drug dropped from his hand. He said, I'm not going to take it again. That was the end of his ordeal. He has been having challenge in movement. That was the end of it. If you must get a different result, you must do what you have not done before. And that's what God is saying. God wants to display his manifold wisdom. But for us to lay hold on it, we must be given to a life of prayer and fasting. James chapter 1 and verse 5. James chapter 1 and verse 5. If anybody lacks wisdom, let him ask of God that gives to all men liberally and upbraided not. It means without finding fault. And it shall be given to him. So go before the Lord. You need wisdom in any area? Go before him. And verse 6, let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. Because anyone that wavers is like the wave of sea that is tossed here and there. Let not that man think he will receive anything from God. 
So as we engage in a fasting season like this, ensure that you set to these issues that you have. I see God giving somebody an answer of peace. In the name of Jesus Christ. Why do you need wisdom? It takes wisdom to rule in life. It takes wisdom to reign. Without wisdom, the opposite of wisdom is foolishness. Without wisdom, nobody attains to any great feat in life. Wisdom is what it takes to reign. Wisdom is what it takes to rule. Very quickly in this service, what a profitable approach to fasting. So two things that among other things that fasting will do, do for us is outbreak of revelation and then it provokes the manifold wisdom of God. The wisdom of God begins to work in our life. But how do we fast the right way? Number one, we must come before God thanking him, praising him, and worshiping him. Thanking him, praising him. And worshiping him. One of the instructions that God gave me in 2020, early this year, is that this will be a year to worship God like never before. It's a year of spending quality time. God wants to reveal things to us, but it will be in an atmosphere of worship. That you are worshiping God, it's not that you want anything, just want to be lost in his presence. Just want to be in his presence. God is looking for worshipers. Those who will worship him in spirit and in truth. Thanking God is appreciating him for what he has done. Praising him is celebrating him for who he is. What is worship? Worship is that posture that you have in his presence. That's why lifting up of your hand is worship. When you come with a seed, is worship. Waiting on him, just declaring his goodness. Lying flat before him is whatever posture you assume in his presence is what is called worship. It's a year to, to empty yourself of yourself so that you can be filled with God. I pray that God will fill somebody here afresh this year in the name of Jesus. Psalm 100 and verse 4. Enter his gate with thanksgiving. And come into his court with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his holy name. When Jesus was telling the disciples the protocol for prayer in Matthew chapter 6 and verse 9. He said, after this manner is what you should pray. Our father who art in heaven, what is the first thing? Hallowed be thy name. Many of us jump to the number three thing. He said, give us this day. God, you don't know. You see, I'm going through the... I say, have you hallowed me? Worship me. Praise has nothing to do with what you are going through. He's just celebrating the person of God. We must come, thank him, praising him, and worshiping him. If we must have audience with him. Number two, approach to fast is to engage the force of faith. A moment of fasting and waiting on the Lord is a moment to engage the force of faith. It is faith-filled prayer that guarantees answers. We read earlier in that James chapter 1 and verse 6. Let him ask in faith. Anything that you ask without faith has no response from God. What God is looking for anytime we are praying is that, do you believe I'm able to do this? It is not only in the volume of our voice, but God is looking for faith. That's why when Jesus meets anybody, the first thing is, do you believe? And when he says they believe, he says, according to your faith. My power is unlimited, but what you can draw from my power is according to your faith. So we must engage in faith-filled prayer. Jude only one chapter and verse 20 say, building up yourself in your most holy faith. So a time of fasting and prayer is a time to build your faith. Can I say somebody, something to somebody today? This is time to build your faith. Can I tell you, the days of adversity is coming in 2020, but what you build up with now 
is what we see you through. Proverbs 24 verse 10. If you faint in the day of adversity, it is not because the problem is more than you. It is because your strength is small. How do I build strength? On the altar of prayer. In the natural, they say for you to build weight, eat well. But in the spiritual, you fast to build weight. So somebody can look robust physically, but is very lean spiritually. So one sickness, one disease by the enemy just sweeps him off. Why? Because he has not built enough capacity. If you faint, it is because your strength is small. But you can build up spiritual weight on the altar of prayer. I pray for somebody here. No matter the challenge you are confronted with, God of heaven will give you victory in the name of Jesus. Matthew 21 and verse 22. Whatever thing that you desire from God, when you ask in prayer, make sure you are believing and then you will receive it. Number three, very quickly, profitable approach to fasting. We must come boldly, not beggarly. How do we approach God in a time of fasting? You must approach him boldly. Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 16. He said, let us come therefore boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. As a child of God, you must be able to approach your heavenly father with boldness. How? This is what your word says. This is the challenge I'm confronted with. Lord, let this situation align with your word. You are not begging. No, you, you are in command. You are in command. I pray for somebody here. Everything that looks like fear, God of heaven will take it out of your life. So he's asking you to come boldly to him. Proverbs 28 and verse 1. Those who belong to God, they will be as bold as lions. The wicked flee when no man pursues, but the righteous, they are as bold as the lion. Please, quit living a beggarly life. I mean, imagine your own child coming to you and he's begging, uh, please give me, he has not eaten for three days, and say, please give me food. I mean, go, go, go and get food. There are things you don't beg for. It's your right in redemption. You have a right to eat. If you allow the enemy to rob you of your right, it's your fault. God has done all that he needs to do. For instance, concerning your health, everything that Jesus needed to do, he has done on the cross. There is no reason under heaven why anybody should be sick. He said, is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why is it that the health of the daughter of my people is not recovered? Jeremiah chapter 8 and verse 22. Get into the world, look at your right, and begin to make demand for it. Lord is my right. Number four, lastly, profitable approach to fasting. We must also engage in praying kingdom advancement prayer. That is the cheapest way to have our own needs met. Putting his kingdom first. Matthew 6 and verse 33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And what happens is that all these things that others are running after shall be mere added unto you. I pray for somebody, this fasting season will not be in vain in Jesus' name. I'll give you very quickly a few keys to bring any situation that you don't want in your life to come to an end. What are the keys that you can use to say enough is enough? To every unwanted situation. Number one, know your right in redemption. Know your right. Know your right. I said earlier that one of the greatest weapon of the devil against the believer is ignorance. Somebody said before that what you don't know may be killing you. Ignorance. So go for light. What is your right? Know your right. 
Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 6, among other things, the Bible says, we have been made to sit together with him in heavenly places. So where are you seated? I'm seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. I'm seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And Ephesians 1 verse 21 says that place is far above principalities and power. Ephesians 1 and verse 21, far above. So where you are seated is far above where the enemy can reach. Say with me, I'm far above. Say one more time, I'm far above. Therefore, enough is enough to every harassment of the devil over your life, over your health, over your career. Why? Because you are far above. You are far above the realm of the enemy. You are far above the place where you'll be sleeping and you'll be seeing some forces pressing you down. You are far above. You are far, you are, you are more than that. Some people say, well, I don't know, I ate in my dream. Yeah, well, you, maybe you are hungry physically and then food came in. The day. Eat it, don't even think about it. Pastor, what does it doesn't mean anything? Every small thing, there are people who are just running up and down. And they are going from one prophet to another, prophesying lies to them. You are far above. You are, you are more than this. Say with me, I'm far above. Enough is enough to ups and down in your life. I say enough is enough to ups and down in your life. Why? Proverbs 4 verse 18. It said the path of the just is as a shining light that shines more and more to a perfect day. So God's plan is for you to be moving from one realm of glory to another. No more shame for you in Jesus' name. Number two. In order to enforce your right and declare enough is enough, reject anything that is against your right in Christ. Anything that is against God's plan, reject it. Reject it. I've shared the testimony sometimes ago of a lady who was pregnant some years ago and went for the normal periodic check. And then the doctor, you know, the midwife began to read all manner of things. Oh, the child has John D. The child. He said, no, not my child. Uh -uh. He said, no, I'm, he said, it's not my child. Uh -uh. He said, okay. Left her for a while. And hurriedly came by. He said, sorry, sorry, sorry. We're reading something for it. Sorry, it's for another person. She would have accepted it. He said, so what are the chances? 50, 50, 50 percent? What are the rate of survival? Please, anywhere you find yourself and they are saying anything that is against what you believe is your right, reject it. Say with me, I reject it. I reject failure. I reject disappointment. What you don't want, you don't watch it. God servant said, what you don't confront is permitted to remain. What you don't resist, you cannot conquer it. Resist the devil, that's what the Bible says, and he will flee. Matthew chapter 13 and verse 24. There was a story of a man who planted good seed on his ground. And the Bible said, the kingdom of God is likened to a man who sowed good seed in his ground. But he said, while men slept, the enemy came and sowed tears and went his way. That's how the story of many people are. Oh, yes, you started your life well, and all of a sudden, all manner of attacks began to come. Verse 28. And when something like that comes, you say, no, he said, the enemy has done this. Whatever the enemy has done in your life, today marks your end in the name of Jesus. I say today marks the end of the hand of the enemy in the name of Jesus. Number three, you must engage the enough is enough order of faith. There is a kind of faith that will not take no for an answer. It's the kind of faith that blind Bartimaeus had. Mark chapter 10 from verse 46 to 52. People around him say, ah, stop crying for Jesus. You know, let him they say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. I'm the one that I know what, where the shoe is pinching me. I'm looking for somebody to take me to the toilet. You are not the one. Leave me, Jesus. Jesus. 
There are situations in our life where you are the one that knows where it hurts the most. And you must be radical with your faith as well. Matthew chapter 15 verse 22. Of course, you know the story of blind Bartimaeus. Jesus there asked him, what do you want? He said, I want my sight. And he said, be it unto you according to your faith. Matthew 15, 22. That Canaanite woman, or what the Bible called the Syrophoenician woman, came to Jesus and said, my daughter is vexed with a devil. And even Jesus Christ said to her, he said, you are a dog. I'm not sent to dogs like you say. I accept I'm a dog. But dogs can still eat from the crumb. Ah, uh, he said, this faith is unusual. There are some people, they are angry with that kind of word. Is it not for the healing of my daughter? They take, get angry and they go with their problem. Some people have left church because of that. Somebody spoke to them and just say, sit there. Say, I won't sit there. I won't even come to this church. As if they are coming to please somebody. As if they are coming for somebody's sake. If you go to your place of work and somebody speaks to you anyhow and you get home, you say, my wife, I'm not even going there. I say, ah, please go. Don't go before because of you. Go because of us. We need the money you are getting from that place of work. <laughs> but somebody comes to church and somebody, you know, there is a kind of faith that refuses to take no for an answer. That is enough is enough kind of faith. I pray for somebody here today. Whatever situation of concern in your life, today marks the expiry date in the name of Jesus. Amen. Number four, engage the power of the tongue. Many people have put themselves in challenges because of the wrong use of their tongue. He said, you are snared by the words of your mouth. Use your mouth well. If you are tired of a situation, don't condone it. Speak against it. Mark eleven twenty three. if you are said to this mountain, be removed and be cast to the sea. And you will not doubt you shall have God, whatever you say. God is saying to your troubler, enough is enough. And lastly, engage kingdom mysteries for your victory. Anytime you are challenged, part of the manifold wisdom of God is the mystery that he has given to us. We have the communion, we have the mantle, we have the anointing, we have feet washing. We have whatever mystery you can lay your hands on. Engage kingdom mystery to bring an end to every ordeal of your life. I pray for somebody. Today marks the expiry date of that ordeal in your life. Every situation of long continuance, they are terminated right now. Rise up on your feet with me. Lift up your voice to heaven and begin to appreciate God. Thank him for his word that has come to you and begin to make declaration right now. Enough is enough to every harassment. Enough is enough to every up and down. Enough is enough to every situation of long continuance. Every age longer deal. No more. No more. No more. No more. No more. My eyes are open. I know what to do. To come out of that challenge. No more. 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 I know my right in God. I'm not leaving this service the same way I came. Enough is enough. To that family crisis. Enough is enough. To loneliness. This situation about my marital destiny, enough is enough. What you don't want, what you don't want, you don't want it. Enough is enough. Begin to declare. Declare enough is enough. Enough is enough to harassment of sickness. Boil. High blood pressure. Enough is enough. I don't want it. Therefore, enough is enough. Thank you, precious Father. In Jesus' precious name, we are praying. All eyes closed and all eyes bow. You are here in this service. You are not born again. You don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. If a man be in Christ, he says a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, everything becomes new. You are here today. You don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You cannot say enough is enough until you identify with Christ. 
You want me to pray with you? You want me to give the privilege to lead you to Christ? Maybe you have once been saved, but you have been disconnected. You want to get reconnected back to God. You say, Pastor, I need Jesus in my life. I want to give my life to him. As all eyes are closed right now, everybody is praying. All let's bow. I want you to raise up your right hand. You want to give your life to Jesus or rededicate your life to him. That is the first step before you can begin to enjoy the blessings of the kingdom. Anyone like that, raise up your right hand. I will pray for you. Thank you for your sincerity. Any other person, thank you for your sincerity. Thank you for your sincerity. You want Jesus in your life. You want an end to every age long or day. Those of you lifting up your hand, take another step forward. Come forward here. Let me pray for you. Let me pray for you. That's why he brought you to give you a change of story. God wants to start something new in your life. Any other person like that, you want to give your life to Jesus or rededicate your life to him. If you are making that decision, come forward and join these precious ones. Those of you in front, say after me, Lord Jesus, I thank you for this privilege to give my life to you. I know I'm a sinner, but you came to forgive me. Father, forgive me. Write my name in the book of life. I believe I am saved. I'm born again. I'm a child of God. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' precious name. I pray that the mighty hand of God will rest upon you. Everything about your life takes a new turn from now. Satan, take off your hand from this ones. In Jesus' precious name. Congratulations. God bless you. Please go with them. They'll give you some information. Hallelujah. If you are clapping for Jesus, make it big, big. Hallelujah. I'm going to be making some declarations right now. Whatever it is that is not of God in your life, maybe you came with any pain in any part of your body, place your right hand there. Everyone, lift up your right hand if if it's in multiple places, just lift up your right hand. But if you have pain in a particular area of your body, place your right hand there. Father, in the name of Jesus, I stand on the rock of ages, which is Christ. And I decree an end has come to every harassment of the devil over this life. In the name of Jesus, from today, whatever is not of God in your life is hereby uprooted. In the name of Jesus. An end has come to shame and reproach in the name of Jesus. All through 2020, whatever tree that the Heavenly Father has not planted, I decree them uprooted right now in the name of Jesus. It shall be a glorious year for you. No more shame, no more reproach. Everyone believe in God for the fruit of the womb. Receive your miracle, children. Everyone believing God to be settled mar mar maritally. I decree your marital settlement in the name of Jesus. Whatever the enemy has stolen from you, lost years, lost career, lost business, I decree supernatural restoration in the name of Jesus. This year 2020 shall be the Isaac order of year for you. Whatever has been delayed by the enemy, they are released in the name of Jesus. I decree that this mountain of fasting and prayer, there shall be outbreak of revelation. God will show you the way to go. For somebody here that is confused, there is clarity of direction in the name of Jesus. Somebody requires wisdom, not just to know, but to be able to do. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Every home that is at the verge of collapse or that has collapsed already, I decree peace in your home in the name of Jesus. Every career that has been stagnated, gain speed now in the name of Jesus. Any child that is a source of concern, I decree the mighty hand of God, rest upon them in the name of Jesus. So shall it be. This season shall not be in vain in your life. I decree this era shall be your era of breaking limit to the right and the left in the name of Jesus. You will return with your testimony. 
you will return with your testimony. Somebody is going for an interview. That interview is your new job in the name of Jesus. It is done. Wave your hands to heaven. Appreciate it. We'll be changed. Wave your hands to him. together for Jesus and be seated in God's presence. We're closing right away. Remember our workers meeting the first one for the year holds this afternoon 12.15 to 2.30 p.m. We're spending quality time in prayers and also remember the fasting is on and you break in the evening at our various home with the communion. So please ensure that you engage. It's not written on anybody's head whether they are fasting. But the result will show. I pray you will have proofs to show this season. In the name of Jesus. Last Sunday, we made some materials available. Vision 2020, which is the vision for the church for the year. Then, breaking limits. The ushers have it available. If you didn't pick one last Sunday, please make sure you pick it on your way out. Then, personal life prophetic declaration for the year. Also, we made available the expectation card for these 21 days of fasting and prayer. Make sure you have a place where it's written the things that you are believing God for. Be specific. Have a set goal of what this fasting must deliver for you. And you will return with your testimony in Jesus' name. Before we close in this service today, if today is your first time of worshiping with us, on a Sunday, can you wave your hands to Jesus wherever you are? It's your first Sunday. Wow, I can see many hands up. Please rise up on your feet. Come with your bags and your Bible. Let's welcome you specially. Please come forward here. If it's your first Sunday, come forward here. Is the Lord. Church, are you clapping for Jesus? Hallelujah. Everybody is somebody. And Jesus is the Lord. You are welcome in the name of Jesus. This is Winners Chapel International Birmingham. We win by God's word here. God does not make mistake. He's the one that has brought you here today. And for coming here today, Enough is enough to every harassment of the devil in the name of Jesus. Church, stretch forth your hands to them and just speak a word of blessing that for coming here today, every one of them is returning with a token for good. The mighty hand of God is resting upon them. Whatever their heart desire is, is turning for a testimony. God of heaven will establish them in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Please open your eyes. We always tell people in three months, of attending this church, you begin to see the visible hand of God. After the order of Obedidom, the ark of God was placed in his house and in three months, even the king was envious of him. That shall be your testimony in Jesus' precious name. We've packaged some gifts for you. We don't want you to go without receiving it. If you follow the people on my left, they will give you those gifts. God bless you. Thank you so much for coming. Keep clapping, keep clapping for Jesus. Shall we all rise up on our feet, lift up your hand to heaven, and appreciate God for the blessing of the day. Give him thanks for what he has done. Give him all the glory. Father, we thank you. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Go in peace. Return with your testimony. This week is a week of good news. This week is a week of good news. This week is a week of good news. No evil report of any kind is permitted in Jesus' precious name. Remember, there is service every day, Monday to Thursday, all through this fasting. We meet in church 6.30. On Fridays, we have a vigil. This last Friday was a glorious time. 
10 p.m. to 4 a.m. We have the one night with the king. Saturday, we meet at the various cells. And we are back here next Sunday. God bless you mightily. Congratulate your neighbor to your right and your left. Let's share the goodness together. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. It's my year of breaking limits. What eyes have not seen, nor ears had, shall be your experience all through 2020. Same shall be your point. Congratulate at least three people as you go. God bless you. God bless you.